welcome to Third Eye Champagne. I'm Kirsten Langston, author and intuitive. And as you can see, I am not live and I am not on camera. It's just been a rough couple of weeks and I need I need a little break. I need a little rest. But I wanted to make sure you guys got all your information, everything that you need, and that you were able to come together and join me on the channel. So I should be in the chat unless I have fallen asleep. <laughs> Unless I've fallen asleep, I should be in the chat. But otherwise, I should be here with you guys chatting along. I just I just needed a break. And it's it's a lot of effort to, you know, get ready. I mean, you guys probably don't care what I look like. But, you know, to get ready and, like, gear myself up to really perform. And, and you know, this way I am I'm cozy on the couch. You know, I don't, I don't have to put hair and makeup on. I'm, I'm in my jam jams. Like, I'm, I'm relaxed. So... Um, I have a few things I want to look at for you today, mostly political. I'm not looking at a ton of celebrity stuff today, but I do want to take a peek at, you know, what's going on in the Middle East and um, anything that might happen on U.S. soil. I want to look at a probable government shutdown. Tommy Tuberville is just being an idiot, so we're going to look at that guy. Um, you know, I want to take a peek at Mike Johnson, maybe get a little bit more on him, uh, Josh Hawley has introduced a, a, a very interesting bill that basically repeals Citizens United, and uh, Mitch McConnell is coming out in full opposition of it, so I'm curious about that. I also uh, have a few things. I want to look at Trump and the primary. He's not going to do as well as he thinks, which is really interesting, so I want to take a peek at that. And also his lawsuits. You know, his children has to te have to testify, and, and Michael Cohen came out today and said he thinks with these trials, Trump's going to lose between 600 and $700 million, which essentially makes him dead broke. So we're going to look at that. That's what we're doing today. Like I said, I should be somewhere in the chat unless I completely fell asleep. Uh, I also want to let you guys know that we have the Langston family seance going up on the website and on Patreon this week. And it, let me tell you something, y'all. This was the most active seance we've ever held. Ever, ever, ever. And I had quite a bit of action. So I do one by myself with just my members and patrons. And then I do one with my family. So you guys actually get to go to my mom's house. And, you know, we do it live for members and patrons. But the recording is going to be up. So we, this was the one at mom's house. And we had um, friends and family over. And I, I'm telling you, we had so much paranormal action. It was kind of ridiculous. We, we had a, a motion-activated device that was just going off consistently, scaring the hell out of us. So that will be up if you want to check it out if you're into the spookies. Parts of it are also going to go up on my other channel, Paranormal Champagne. So make sure you are subscribed to both channels, especially if you like the paranormal stuff. And then the other thing I want to let you know is, um, yes, I'm open for readings. So if you want to get a reading, email me. But also, I'm going to be doing a war special. So there's a lot of stuff. I am, I am the redheaded stepchild of YouTube. I just got another notification that they took something else down because I used the, um, the lover's card in the tarot, which has naked drawings on it. And they were like, you can't have that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So anyway, I'm the redheaded stepchild of YouTube, which means I can't read on YouTube other things that other psychics probably are able to freely read on. So we are doing a Zoom next week, November 9th. That's a Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And it's going to be focused completely on the war. I'm going to ask, answer all of your questions. We're going to really deep dive into it. Because I know a lot of people are freaking out. A lot of people are wondering if the U.S. is going to get more involved. Will there be boots on the ground? Da, 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 da. What's going on here? I want to look very deeply into it. I looked at it a couple weeks ago, but I want to give it another peek. So if you want to get in on that, you can either become a member or a patron. You can be, become a member at thirdeyechampagne.com or you can become a patron over at my Patreon. The links are in the box below. It's $11 a month, so you're going to get not only that zoom, but everything you get everything. And it's a really good website. The website, I just put up the horoscopes for each sign. I put up the tarot scopes for each sign. We also have, I'm finally getting going on the witch's kitchen. So I just put up a bunch of really gorgeous recipes featuring basil, which these aren't just recipes. They are also 
sort of spells. So basil brings in love and money. So when you start to cook with basil mindfully, you're bringing those things into your life. So not only do you get to eat delicious food, but you're also putting out energy that attracts these things that you desire, such as wealth and love. Anyway, you can join or you can go over. The link is also in the box, givebutter.com slash I want to make sure I get the, the thing right. Mid East Special. And it's five bucks a ticket. And that's going to get you in with us on the Zoom. And it will also get you a recording if you can't make it. But I will be answering all of your questions. And that is ad free and uncensored. Worth the five bucks. So that is going on next Thursday. All right, let's jump into it. I'm going to do a little bit on what's going on in the Middle East. I have to be very careful about what I read on. Um, the one thing I'm going to tell you that I feel safe telling you is that it's going to be protracted. I just don't look for a resolution anytime soon. We're definitely going to go into 2024 with this. I do think there will be a resolution, but this is protracted. It is protracted. The other thing I want to look at is anything happening on U.S. soil, because I know people are very worried about that. The FBI has issued a warning, and I want to say at this point in time, I don't see anything like that. So I think we're okay there. That's all I'm going to talk about. That's all I can talk about on YouTube. They are just watching me like a little hawk. So I got to be very careful. The next thing I'm going to look at is Mike Johnson and this government shutdown. So if we go into a government shutdown, it will be on November 17th. I do see that we are going to. I, I, I don't, I think this guy, I have to sigh. I don't, when I read on him, I don't, obviously I don't like him. He is one of those, he's a, he's a, he said something like, oh, we're a Christian nation or something. He's having people pray on the floor of the Senate. I mean, it's literally completely unconstitutional. It is literally unconstitutional bringing his religion into my government. But nobody's stopping him. Nobody's stopping him. He has terrible energy. What I do feel on him is that he wants to flex his muscles. This guy wants to flex his muscles and I think he's going to do that by forcing a government shutdown. He wants to flex on Biden so hard. I mean, I can feel it. I also, I'm going to go back to Johnson, but I do want to say this has been coming through for me. We are, a politician's going to die soon, fairly soon, relatively soon. I don't know who it is. I mean, we can assume it's Jimmy Carter. He's been in hospice care forever, but it could be McConnell. I don't know, but somebody, we've got a, we've got a politician passing over soon. I don't believe it's Biden. I don't believe it's Trump, <laughs> but... Uh, we do have somebody that's crossing over soon, and it does feel male to me. Um, so there is that. Somebody important. That's why I keep going. It's got to be Carter or or McConnell because they would make a big deal out of that. That's that's kind of those are my two my two main suspects. I can't see who it is. I can see that it's an older male, older white male. And they're, they're crossing over fairly soon. I mean, I don't think we're going to get out of the month of November, you know, without this person crossing over. Back to Johnson. I do believe he's going to force a government shutdown. I just feel, reading on his energy, feeling on his energy, it's just he wants to flex too hard not to make there be a shutdown. And I'm also reading on Biden so I'm not using cards right now, you guys. I'm just, like I said, I'm cozy. I'm on my couch and I'm just doing a free read here. But I also see Biden kind of knowing what's coming. Biden's not stupid. Biden knows what's coming with this guy. He's like, all right, he's going to try to flex on November 17th or, you know, before this, this you know, he's going to force a shutdown. I mean, he is, he is absolutely aware of this. Biden knows what's going on here. I think... Um, it doesn't go on for super long, but it does feel like it's a few weeks um, before they finally get their, their their act together. I don't like this guy, Johnson. I don't like him. He's, he's a no-name, and now he's going to try to make a name for himself. I said it was going to be a no-name guy, and I, you know, I'm just... 
And he, he feels to me like this is not a person that wants to play the bipartisan game. This is not somebody, he doesn't want to help, you know, like let's compromise. He doesn't want any of that. This guy is just ram all my stuff through, ram it through, ram all my Christian nationalist bullshit through. That's it, period. If they don't like it, they can eat it. You know, it's like tough shit. I don't care. He's not. He's drunk on his own power. <laughs> it really is. He's, I'm looking at the guy and I'm like, oh, buddy. Just, just from the first time I read on him until now, he feels different to me. People are bowing down to this guy. That is legit. People are just, and it's just going straight to his head. There is a possibility that he gets kicked out before we hit that 2024 election cycle, it's not, it's not a very strong possibility, but it is sort of hanging around his head. But I don't see him getting much done. So even though he's like, ram it through, like he just like, whatever this guy can think of, ram it through, push it through, national abortion ban, pet, you know, ram it through. He's not going to get much done when I look away from him and I look at bills and I look at, you know, the house and the Senate, it's just like, they're just stonewalled. I think they're stonewalled until 2024. I don't think they get anything done. And then it feels to me like 2024 hits and it's like, whoa, it's going to be a huge blue wave. First of all, I I definitely see a blue house and a blue Senate. I'm pretty sure we're, we're going to keep Biden. We're going to have a blue president. So I think we get everything back. Um, we are very U.S. heavy, by the way, reading on the, um, the politics today. It's just where my, my mind wanted to go. You know, when you guys, when I don't have you guys, I, I, I start to free associate. <laughs> but it's, my mind was like, oh, it's all U.S. all the time today. I think with my cunt, as I like to call him rudely, that's Hunt with an H, you sickos. Anyway, I think with him, he doesn't last long. But I do think he makes it to 24 right now. Like I said, there's a possibility that's sort of hovering around that he won't make it that far, but I think he does. And, but I don't see, I see gridlock. I just see total gridlock. They get nothing done. These people get nothing, done, absolutely nothing. I just, I keep seeing the Republicans continuing to fight amongst themselves. And right now they really do want to ouster, regular Republicans want to ouster this, this whole Trump contingent. And they're not, let me tell you this, people like McConnell, people that, that are of his ilk, they don't care about the Christian nationalist agenda, but they are catering to it. If they had their desires, I'm reading on these, you know, the regular Republicans, quote unquote, as a collective, like the, you know, the Romneys, even though he's not there anymore, but like, you know, Mitt Romney and, um, oh, who was the crying guy? Boehner, Boner, as we know, you know, those types, they, they don't like that agenda, that hardline agenda. They don't like the Trump agenda. They don't like the hardline Christian nationalist agenda. They don't want to, they don't want to cater to it, but they are, they are trying to get rid of it. Um, you're going to get a replacement for McConnell that is, worse than McConnell, because he's on his way out. That guy's done. He's worse than McConnell in his rhetoric and his beliefs and what he tries to pass, basically, but he doesn't have the power that McConnell has. That That is not there. And it and he can't, it is a man, he can't amass that power. There's also something up with Tennessee. I don't know why I'm getting a hit on Tennessee, but there's something going on there. I I. I don't know what it is. I'm just getting Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. It feels disruptive, whatever I'm looking at. But I don't know. This isn't like, woohoo, let's throw Tennessee a party. It's like, we might need to send them, you know, what? I don't know, thoughts and prayers. Maybe a flat of Kleenex from Costco. Uh, but something, something feels disruptive around Tennessee. Could be a storm. I don't know what it is. I really don't. It could be political. It could be... I don't know, but something, something disruptive is coming for Tennessee. And I don't know, I, I don't have a timing on this. I'm just feeling it. It's coming up for me. Kind of like the free associating. It's a little bit different to do these kinds of readings when you don't have a live audience and you don't have a chat. 
it allows me to actually take in more information because with the with the lives I'm always constantly looking in the chat to kind of see you know what people are saying and what questions we have coming up and if there are follow-up questions to what I'm reading on right now and it it's it's not really conducive to psychic information like reading like that it's hard it makes it harder so this you know this is kind of where a lot of information comes in and you'll notice when I do those readings too and especially when I'm doing the channelings like when I start to tune you guys out and I'm like eyes closed and talking really fast you know yes I can get the information that way of course much easier and much faster so I'm not surprised that we have little tidbits sneaking in here off the subject of what I'm attempting to read on because it's that's the information is just flowing, easier to flow when I'm sitting cozy by myself. Anything else we need to know about Johnson? Okay, and Mike Pence is going to be in the news again soon, and I don't know why, but Mike Pence is coming up also. There's going to be a lot of action on the Republican side. It's not just this primary either. You're going to get a lot of action out of these people. I don't know. It sort of feels like a last gasp kind of a thing, but I just, I, I mean, if you know, Mitch hired me to read for him and said, you know, what's happening with my party? I would be, I would give him the, you know, Molly, you in danger girl speech. It's not good. It's very tumultuous. People can't seem to get along. I do think we need to keep an eye on Josh Hawley because I think that guy could be a presidential contender and he's quite dangerous, quite dangerous, but also malleable. So it's weird. He's not... Like he can be bought kind of, but also I think not just with money, but with flattery, you know, like he, the power would go to his head. He'd be sort of Trumpy, like he would be making decisions that people are like, is that constitutional? I'm not sure. You know, that kind of a thing. We got to keep an eye on that guy. But I would, I would tell Mitch, listen, you got trouble in River City, homie. This is not looking good for you. It's a lot of fighting. And at this point, these these people he doesn't love so much, his Trumpers and his Christian nationalists, they are really digging in. They're really trying to take over the party. You're going to see a house cleaning. I know people did not like it when I said that. They're like, you're an idiot. There's not going to be a house cleaning. Well, there is. There is. You're going to see people, and I think Matt Gates may have a pretty decent target on his back. Did you see they did not expel George Santos, by the way? Um, Democrats, like something like, I don't know, 15 Democrats voted present or something. Like, come on, dude. That guy's a crook. Get rid of him. It's just, it's just, you're just sitting in a soiled diaper when you let people like that stay where they are. Lots of lots of information coming through today, but with with this Republican Party, I would I would have to say, uh, it's just it's not looking good. It's losing its power, but it's it's listen. It's a very long downfall. It's a very long downfall. It's years, possibly even a full decade in the making before you get. Either a third party that becomes pretty powerful or you get a different Republican party than you've ever seen before. But I don't believe it's going to be this sort of fascism thing that we're seeing right now. It would be something completely different. Either way, there's something completely different that would be born out of this Republican party right now, this chaos. But if you're waiting for them to splinter apart like anytime soon, you won't see it. It's a very slow decline. Like I said, I think it's about upwards of a decade from now, you're going to go, oh, okay. Somebody comes along too. some young guy comes along. It's like, I'm remaking the party. It's like, I'm the new Ronald Reagan, blah, 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 blah. Like it's, I see this. We're going to see an increase in flooding within the next couple of weeks, by the way. I'm not sure where, I mean, this is global, but, but keep an eye out for some place just having massive, massive floods. I don't think that it's that storm that's hitting Europe right now, which is going to make 
a shit ton of damage, by the way, Europeans, my dear friends in Europe, um, that is, it's going to damage more than they predicted. So whoever, whoever's not, not psychic, but whoever's scientifically running models going, oh, it's going to cause $5 million in damage, it's going to cause 10. Like they've underestimated it. Do we need to be careful of Mike Johnson? Yes and no. I mean, the guy's dangerous and he's going to, he's just going to stop everything. Whatever they're trying to get done, it's just not going to get done because of this guy. And, and like, he's going to be putting out dead bills. You know what I mean? Like bills that like, oh, look what I did. But then he knows it's not going to go anywhere in the Senate. Oh, look what I did. Here's the national abortion ban. Oh, here's this. Oh, here's that. Blah, blah, blah. Look what I did. Oh, you know, like they're trying to tie aid to Israel with, you know, getting rid of the, 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 I like they're trying to defund the IRS basically. Um, nobody's going to go for that. Not enough people will go for that to make it a reality. It's, it's a, it's a non-starter. It's a really serious non-starter. And I think that's, that's setting the tone for what you're going to see coming out of, of the house and the Senate both. It's just a series of non-starters it's just absolute gridlock. And I will tell you, looking at Biden, reading on Biden, he's just like, he's giving me total frustration right now. I know he's a Scorpio. I wonder when his birthday is. But he's giving me total frustration. Just like, like his Congress can't get anything done. Like, he's kind of giving me, you know, I had plans. Kirsten, I had plans. You know, he's, he's, it sucks because he's looking at, you know, people are, oh, his approval ratings are falling and everybody's bitching at him and da, 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 da. He's actually doing a really decent job. Believe it or not, I am no Biden fan. I am not a Biden fan. Um, I say this repeatedly. I don't like any politicians. And um, I just think that the majority of them are just, just money hungry, power hungry scum. They don't care about helping people. I do. There's a few of them. I'm like, you help people. But for the most part, it's just, you know, they want to, f- give tax breaks to their rich friends and themselves and get all that delicious free health care that they won't let us have. And, you know, da, 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 da. So I'm no Biden fan, but I will tell you this. Biden is actually doing a pretty decent job. I know people are going to argue with me and hate that I say that, but I'm going to tell you this in hindsight after he's dead too. People are going to turn around and look at that and go, okay, he actually did a good job. He actually, he actually did okay. History will actually be kind to Joe Biden. And I know a lot of people are not going to like that prediction, but that's, that's what I'm saying. And I'm sticking by that one. And again, I'm not a Biden fan, but when it comes to how many people he helped, how many programs he implemented, history is going to be very kind to him. Seriously, seriously, that's legit. That's legit. He's, he's doing more for people than we realize. He's passed some good stuff. He's done some good stuff. He's doing more for people than we realize. And again, not a fan. But um, I'm telling you, history will be very kind to Joe Biden, particularly with regards to the current situation. You know, um, there, I see a lot on the artist formerly known as Twitter. By the way, that that was uh, valued at $44 billion with when Elon bought it, and it is now valued at 19 So he's just tanking it. I said he would. I predicted that. There it is. But I see a lot on the artist formerly known as Twitter with, you know, Biden's doing certain things. There's, there's keywords, trigger words I don't want to talk about. We can talk about that on the January, January, oh my God, Kirsten, on the November 9th special. But People are not loving Biden's response to this whole situation in the Middle East, and and they're accusing him of aiding and abetting the G word. And I think people are actually, once we're out of this, the majority of people are going to turn around again, in hindsight, look at it and go, oh, well, he didn't have a lot of choice. His hands were tied. This is kind of what he had to do, da 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 um, Politically speaking, maybe not morally speaking, but politically speaking, I think people are going to go, yeah, well, you know, he, he had, he had to do what he had to do. So Tommy Tuberville, this piece of garbage is holding up something like 300 military appointments because he doesn't want the military to subsidize abortions, basically. 
and people are pissed. So he gets into a big thing. This is yesterday. And I want to say it was Jody Ernst, somebody's name I can't remember, and our favorite, our favorite guy, Lindsey Graham. And Lindsey Graham went hard on this guy. Lindsey Graham was like, I've been trying to work with you for nine months. Like he went hard on Tuberville. And Tuberville is not budging and people are pissed. And those are the types, like Tuberville, those are the kinds of people I'm talking about that, you know, the, the McConnell Republicans are like, we got to get rid of these people. We, gotta, we have to sabotage them. We got to get rid of them. I will tell you this, any sabotage you see, on Republican people. I'm telling you this, the calls are coming from inside the house. I'm telling you this. So any consequences for Tuberville? Mm, Yeah, actually. Uh, They're not going to get this guy to budge. I mean, they really won't. I saw when I see gridlock, I see absolute and total gridlock and he's just being an ass. The man is just being an ass to be an ass. And I think you're going to get a few. Eventually, he's kind of like, well, all right, I'll, I'll confirm a few people. Like, he, he's going to give a tiny bit. All right, well, I'll do five. You know, and it's like, I, I think they brought up 60 people yesterday individually because he said, oh, well, I'll vote on them individually, but I won't do, you know, a sweeping vote. And he still wouldn't vote. So I think you're going to get a few people out of him. But for the most part, it, just expect gridlock on that too. And people, I'm telling you this, people are really really pissed at him they're really upset with this guy his own party I mean Lindsey Graham is just scratching the surface here on how upset these people are then they're just like he's just nobody likes this guy they're just like he's just being an ass he's just being an ass he's also trying to do now this is interesting but looking at him he's trying to do some kind of behind the scenes deals or backdoor deals and people just aren't going for it so there's something weird going on here uh, I, I'm not sure what it is. Like, well, if you if you give me this, then I'll give you that. You know, it's that kind of a thing. But people aren't really going for it. But he's looking or hoping or waiting for something to happen behind the scenes in order for him to move forward on this. And it's just not coming. It's not, it's literally, it's not coming. Anything else on Tuberville? I mean, there are consequences to this. I do wonder if he gets primaried. His own constituents think he's an idiot, too. They're not happy with him. If he were my client, I like to play if he were my client. If he were my client, um, I would, let me look at him. What would I tell you? Oh, yeah, I'd be telling him, you know what, buddy? You're shooting yourself in the foot. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. This is not good. And it doesn't, it does not fare well for him over time. If he were my client, I would say, I think you really need to seriously rethink your position. And and whatever is weird, I can't tell what it is he's waiting for, but whatever it is he's waiting for behind the scenes does not show up. And I don't know what it is. I don't think it's like a payoff, but but it feels like trade for trade, like deal for deal, and it doesn't it doesn't materialize. Let's take a peek at Josh Hawley's bill. So again, dangerous guy. This bill is going to win him a lot of fans if he can get it passed. Although McConnell says, you'll never get it past the Senate. Nobody will vote on it. I don't know how true that is. Everybody knows McConnell is going. They are now going to look for certain new people to align with and pledge allegiance to. And Josh Hawley may be one of those people. But everybody knows McConnell has lost his grip. All of his Republicans know this. He's done. He knows it. Everybody knows it, but they're all kind of maintaining the illusion that, no, nope, he's fine and strong and he's going to be around for a long time. And da, da, he's not. He's, he's none of those things. Mitch McConnell is none of those things. And I think this bill, which essentially overturns Citizens United, which it should be overturned. It's fucking disgusting. But this bill... Uh, It doesn't pass. Well, let me put it this way. It doesn't pass the first time. Right now, it doesn't pass the first time. But don't be surprised to see it come back up again. With a few different concessions. So I don't think... Okay. It's weird how this is coming through. I mean, technically... They're going to overturn Citizens United technically with this bill. It's going to be overturned. But 
but it's there's still parts of Citizens United in this new bill. So this bill that Holly has, not going to pass, but some version of it does pass. It's sort of watered down. I think he knows it's going to end up being watered down. A lot of this is being done for grandstanding and posturing. He's trying to see how many people he can rally, particularly on the left and the right, because he knows it's an extremely popular issue. This is definitely preceding a run for president. This man will run for president. I don't know when. I'm not sure when. But watch out for him because he's dangerous. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but (laughs) I'm going to keep on saying it. Yeah, the first bill doesn't pass, but a watered down version of it does. And it's helpful. It's helpful. It's actually helpful to kicking out some of this corporate dark money and, and, and stuff like that away from campaigns. Let's take a quick peek. And I'm running out of steam here, so I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be here much longer. I'm gonna have to get off and go relax some more. But uh I wanna take a quick peek at Putin's health. Still very weak. This guy's still very weak. But I think he's going to be okay. Honestly, honestly. Um, he, but he felt like that to me last time. Like I said, if, if he were to die, it would be because somebody took him out, not because he was of natural causes. And he does feel, he feels weak, but he feels stronger to me than he did last time I read on him. But he is weak. This guy is weak, 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 weak. And guys are saying near the end of his life, But he, I'm telling you, he doesn't die a natural death. And now I'm wondering, you know, about murder or um, maybe by his own hand or even like an accidental OD or maybe an intentional OD. Or, but eh, this guy doesn't, you know, he doesn't die a natural death. There's something hinky about it. But I'm not, and, and I know he's near the end of his life. I guarantee you this man's near the end of his life. He, he's losing his grip. And we, you know, we read on this last time. So we kind of know there's going to be chaos coming to Russia, which will destabilize the entire world. It's also going to give Z in China a really big, healthy leg up. It's like he's just sitting there waiting. <laughs> he's just sitting there waiting, like peering around. Is he gone yet? But I don't think it's coming anytime soon, soon, soon. I don't like within the next, you know, couple of weeks. I don't see this guy going. I don't. But he's close to the end of his life. This man is close to the end of his life. I would venture more towards years than months or weeks. But he's close. He's very close. Oh, and there's also going to be some kind of like mass arrest somewhere in South America, and I can't tell where it is, but I'm in South America uh, on the west side. On I think it's a coastal town, coastal state, um, country, whatever. It's coastal, west side. And there's like a big arrest or something, something like some big capture or, you know, we caught this whole cartel or, you know, we just found, you know, 25,000 tons of cocaine. Like there's something big coming But I don't know, I just know it's on the west coast of South America. Keep an eye out for that one. But it it, it is, it's like, I think it has to do with cartels or something. Um, Okay, let's take a peek at Trump. Trumpy. First of all, I want to tell you this, the primary for Trump is not going to go as well as he thinks it is. I still think he's going to be the nominee, but he actually according to Trump's own people's projections and Trump's projections and probably projections, uh, you know, from the world at large, it does not look to me like this man does as well as he believes he's going to do or as, as anybody believes he's going to do. It, it, he, he's, this guy's on the wane. He's waning. This whole lawsuit thing really nailed him, you know, and, you know, people I've been hearing People talk about, oh, it's conspiracies and they're just trying to keep him from running again. And listen, both things are true. The man is a criminal, yes, and they are using the judicial judicial system to make sure he does not run again. And in addition, it's not a Democratic witch hunt. There are also many Republicans on board trying to get rid of this guy. And you know, one of them is Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham 
realized he tanked his career, basically. I mean, he's still going to keep his job, but he knows what he looks like, and he doesn't like it. And he knows it's because Trump had something on him. And so the best thing he can do is neutralize this guy. So everybody bitching about, oh, it's a Democratic witch hunt and blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. It's not a witch hunt, number one. The man is a criminal. Number two, were the lawsuits brought on purpose to keep him from running again or becoming president again? Yes, both are true. And yes, this is a, a, a joint effort by Republicans, you know, regular ones, not Trumpy ones, Republicans and Democrats to neutralize this guy. Because regardless of what you were seeing during the whole Trump thing, I mean, that you know, they'll just bend whichever way the, the you know, the wind blows. They are, they're like bamboo. They just bend with the wind. But would they, especially, I mean, Mitch McConnell's not stupid. He's really smart. Again, I go back to my McConnell Republicans. It's the best kind of catchphrase I've got for them. But they didn't want to be under a fascist state any more than, you know, anybody else did. They were not interested in, in especially, particularly Trump's brand of fascism. So, uh, you know, it's interesting because I, I read a lot where people are going, it's a witch hunt, and they're just doing this. Yeah, they're doing that so that's the best way they could attack him. But also, he does happen to be a criminal. These are not trumped up charges. It's no coincidence that charges were brought, but they're not, pardon the pun, trumped up. He doesn't do as well in the primary as he thinks he's going to do. And in, in, in certain a number, a certain number of states also, people are like, oh, I really thought Trump was going to get that. Or, you know, he just barely wins in certain states. Like, it's not good. And this is surprising to this man. But he's got bigger fish to fry. So all of his children are now being compelled to testify against him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I shouldn't laugh. But it's kind of like, you know the family that crimes together does time together, right? Like, like you're all being dragged into this. So now both sons and daughter Ivanka are, oldest sons and daughter Ivanka are, are being compelled to testify against him. Ivanka was like, can I just do it from like a Zoom? And they were like, no, you got to come over here and do it. You can't do it from Florida. How damaging are these testimonies? Meh. They're pieces of the puzzle. I think they do add two pieces of the puzzle. And I, I mean, I don't think these people are going to perjure themselves. I actually don't, believe it or not. I actually don't. I think they're going to be very coached and very cagey with their answers. You might see a little bit of combativeness coming out of Ivanka, believe it or not. But they're not going to lie for their dad. And, and I think the prosecution is waiting waiting for them to lie. I think they're waiting for perjury and I think they know that. So what I'm seeing here is fairly honest testimony. Some people might plead the fifth on certain things. I don't know. They might refuse to testify altogether, but whatever they do, they don't lie. They could bend, stretch, distort the truth, but you're not going to get an outright lie from any three of these people. You are not. And they are not going to be providing extremely damning testimony to the point where it's, you know, it's like a movie. Like, and then Ivanka said, blah, and then we all knew he was going away for life. Like, no, you're not going to get that. But I do think that they are going to provide pieces of the puzzle in order to um, convict this guy. Even if their piece of the puzzle is to say, I plead the fifth, or um, I can't answer that because I'll, you know, I'll incriminate myself that that is a piece of the puzzle. Are they happy about it? I mean, no, nobody's happy about it. They're sullen. What I get from them, from all three of these kids, is extremely sullen. Like sullen, like their daddy's sullen. Just sullen. Can't believe this is happening. This is stupid. No, no. Like I just get like rich kid, sort of snobby, you know, whiny, tantrumy kind of sullen behavior out of them. They just don't want to do it. And they feel like it's all kind of all over the map, but it's kind of like 
sort of selfish in a way. Like, why are we being dragged into dad's shit? You know, <laughs> like there's a, there's a selfishness to it. Why are we being dragged into dad's crap? Why can't they just leave us alone? And then, you know, if it was, if it was Biden, if it was Obama, we wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't put Malia on the stand, you know, this kind of thing. These people come across as super racist when I read on them. They really do. It's kind of crazy. I'm just like, the minute I said the name Malia, I was like, oh my God. They are just, they are just living their best straight white people lives. You know what I mean? Ivanka's no fool, I'll tell you that. The two brothers, not quite bright, but Ivanka got her mother's brains, I think. She's no, she's no fool. Very, very, very manipulative woman, too. Really good at it, just like daddy. Because she, cut, she, she comes across to me as just, she's just kind of giving me like a closed mouth smile, very prim and proper, wearing like her little outfit, just serene, my life is perfect, I'm such a good person, you know, giving me lots of victimhood vibes, like they're persecuting us, uh, you know, I don't deserve this treatment, it's because I'm a woman, da, 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 da. and then underneath it, it's just nasty, nasty, nasty shit. Nasty shit. And you know, we haven't looked at Melania in a while, because why bother, but but what's interesting with her, just kind of briefly touching on her, she feels very oddly empty to me. And I do wonder in the spiritual sense, how much of Melania is in the body? How much of Melania's spirit is, you know, um, I almost said incarcerated. <laughs> Maybe that was a psychic Freudian slip. But how much of the spirit is incarnate, you know, because she feels empty. Like, I'm, I'm trying to read. I'm like, okay, where are you? Where's the personality? Don't see it. Where's the spirit? Don't see it. It's like she's a shell. So I don't know what's going on with that. But spiritually speaking, because like even with Trump, it's like, well, he's in there. He just feels like dog poo. Like, you know, <laughs> like he's in there. I just don't want to touch his energy. But with her, I'm like, is anybody home, girl? And it's weird because she didn't feel, I mean, I was reading her quite a bit, you know, 2017, 2018. She didn't feel like this to me. So I do kind of wonder, which always felt sort of vacant and vacuous, but this is worse. I, I kind of wonder about, you know, soul sickness, um, which I didn't really think because your soul can't be sick, but it's a phrase, you know. But some kind of, deficit some kind of spiritual deficit i mean they all have they all have spiritual deficits they're not exactly living a christ like life right but um there's something something weird about this lady it's not even that she's like black in there like i look at trump and he's black i'm just like okay you just got really black dark sludgy energy but he's there I look at Melania and it's just darkness it's not black not really color I mean there's just nothing there empty completely empty it's like she's a vessel without a spirit or a personality in it I don't know if you guys can hear my frog I hope you can hear my frog I don't actually own a frog but he lives, he or she, they live in my patio with their little friends. And I have a lot of joy when I hear the sound of the frog. Yeah, this is weird. She just feels like there's nothing in there. Like she's just, she's like a zombie person, but I'm serious. Like, I'm like, where, where is the Melania? It's just a body walking around. She does, she also has a lot of weird attachments, like re, just weird, like, you know, dark, dark stuff kind of hangs around these people for sure. But hers, stuff that's hanging out in her aura and stuff. Ooh, 
It's weird. It's all wiggly. It's all wiggly and erratic. With Trump, the stuff hanging out on him, it's really heavy. And, you know, it it sort of feeds his grandiosity. Like he has an energy that hangs on him that feeds his grandiosity, which is unfortunate for him. Imagine if Trump got like a, you know, shamanic clearing prior to being president, we might've had a decent one. (laughs) But this guy is like, let me, let me walk around with 20 tons of spiritual crap attached to my body. But it's not, it's, it's weird. Cause I look at the kids. Yeah. Kind of heavy and gross. You know, I look at Ivanka and Tweedledee and Tweedledumber and, you know, it's typical heavy shit. But then I look at Melania and it's weird. It's wiggly. It's just these wiggly strings of energy coming off her, super erratic. I don't know. It's funky. There's some funk going on on that lady. She, it feels like she's not in there. I know, I just keep saying it over and over again because I'm sort of aghast, like, she's not in there. What is? Like, what's driving the, what's driving the car? see if I can pick anything else up on the Trump stuff. But, but I mean, this, this is going to continue to go as expected. This guy's going down. Downtown Julie Brown. He is done. He is absolutely done. It takes a while, though. It takes a while. Anything else they need to know before I go? Yes. A little message for you guys. Okay, before I go, don't forget, if you want to get in on this war special that is next week, Thursday, November 9th, 4 p.m. PST. Go to givebutter.com slash mid-east special. The link is in the box. If you are a member or a patron, if you are a member of thirdeyeschampagne.com or a member of my Patreon, do not go buy a ticket because you get that for the free. That is yours for free. If you want to sign up, become a member and a patron, then you can do that. Also, link is in the box. And then you also don't have to buy a ticket. So do not do both. And what they're giving me is um, they want everybody to pay attention to the new moon coming in on November 13th because it's going to usher in some pretty, what they're saying, are energies that we haven't felt really on this earth before or haven't felt in a very long time. They're also telling me that energies, this is weird, but they're telling me that Egyptian Egyptian energies will be coming back. Like something about Egyptian energy, the culture, um, ancient Egypt is like suddenly on the forefront again. I'm not sure what that means, but they, they keep showing me like they're showing me pyramids before the pyramids. Like this is super ancient Egypt. So I don't know what this is, but they're saying yeah, those, those types of energies are coming back. So I think this is the last time we've really felt that. But it, it is, we're having a very large shift. We're in the middle of an extremely large energetic shift. And this new moon is going to bring in more of those energies we haven't felt before. If anybody is feeling, you know, the spiritual flu, like the ascension flu, they call it, where you have like weird physical symptoms, but you can't link them to anything. Not a doctor can't treat or diagnose anything. You should always check with the doctor. If you have weird symptoms, there's your legal disclaimer. But if you're having any of that and you don't have an, a reason for it, it's these energies coming in and it will clear on its own. Anything else? Yeah. The guides are saying, <laughs> the guides are saying, well, everybody here is about to be woken up. That to me says information. That to me says information we have not previously been privy to is going to be coming to us and it feels very real world. So it's not, it's not some esoteric thing that nobody talks about. It's like, nope, you're about to, they're about to pull back the curtain and we're going to see who the real wizard is kind of a thing. So I don't know what this is, but this is legitimate information we're about to get. And um, also they're showing me, you know, I can't harp on climate change enough. I know everybody's probably sick of me talking about it and the guides always talk about it. And it was even coming through, I think, on the the seance. They were talking about, you know, watch it. Um, They are telling me that you're going to have an increase in these stories in the news about climate change, climate change, climate change. 
And for a while, for a while, like a long while, like a good 10, maybe 15 years, it sort of feels like nobody's doing anything about it. And it's just sort of weather disaster upon weather disaster upon weather disaster. Also, they're telling me we're going to see an increase in earthquakes around the world. And that's like, has nothing to do with climate change. But they're like, just there's going to be an increase, just so you know, in the next year, year and a half, we're going to see more than we normally would. But they are saying that the important thing here is like, don't give into your fear, but go find solutions and push your politicians, no matter where you live towards solutions, because they're telling me as usual, politicians are going to be very slow to respond. They're also telling me there's going to be a day of reckoning for the people. I mean, they don't judge on the other side. You don't get judgment. You don't get punished. You don't, you don't go to hell. None of that happens. But they're telling me a day of reckoning. So I'm not sure what this means. And it may very well just mean that when these people cross over, or maybe even now, maybe they get held accountable. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of a trial or something. I don't know. Like, you know, Senate hearings or something like with the tobacco people. But but they're held accountable for this. The people that perpetuated this. People that knew that, that it was coming, like these oil companies. They knew and they continued to negate it. They continued to block it. They continued to profit off, you know, things that they should have been phasing out. They're telling me, the guides are telling me there is a massive, massive day of reckoning coming for these people. They're also talking to me about, um, the, listen, this capitalist society, <sighs> there's going to be a very large shift towards socialism, extremely large. And they're saying, now get this, especially, this is weird because it, it seems counterintuitive, okay? But they're telling me massive shift, global shift towards socialism. This is long term, very long term. This is between now and, and 100 years from now. But they are telling me if you want to have money, if you want to make money, shift more towards a socialist standpoint. And if you own a business, if you run a business, you want to run it from that kind of a standpoint because that's actually where people will be making money in the future. That's actually where you are more secure financially in the future. And these people that I, it seems counterintuitive, I know, but this is what they're telling me. These people that are dragging their feet, that are, you know, the haves and the have nots, and, you know, all this, you know, we're in this new awful, you know, age of the, the robber barons. They end up losing a lot. And not not just from a, a financial perspective, but from a spiritual perspective. Um, but I'm telling you this. This they're showing me this. Capitalism, it takes a long time. We're we're just at the very tippy toe beginning of it. We barely got a full toe in the water right now as far as this global move. But it becomes a kind of like democracy became a thing. It becomes the way of life. It becomes the way of life. Absolutely. It's a very, very long-term prediction, but I'm feeling it super hardcore. And they're, they're basically saying, you know, if you can build things, if you're building a business, you know, if you're watching this and you're young and you haven't jumped into the business world yet, whatever it is, they're saying as much as you can use more socialist concepts the better off you're going to be. They're telling me that we are really entering, oh, this is great. Oh my God, I kind of love this. They're, we're really entering at the age of the Christ energy. And um, they're showing me a lot of erroneous stuff that was put in the Bible, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but they are saying, listen, we're really moving into this band of Christ-like energy, which is also which is also the energy of Buddha. It's the same energy. And it's kind of not been the dominant energy for quite some time, but we're moving into oh shit, this is the second coming. Sorry, it just hit me. I'm like, oh my God. Everybody's waiting for a person to come back, but it's an energy. So this energy band that Buddha and Christ are on, it always existed, but they personified it and they helped cement it into this particular reality and dimension, okay? Okay. So you can call it Buddha energy and call it Christ energy. I'm sure it has a million other names. But it's sort of been absent for thousands of years. And it's coming back. 
2028. So we're, we're working our way up to it, but it fully, it fully begins to really take over in 2028. It's going to become the dominant energy. I don't know what the hell that's going to look like. I have no idea what that's going to look like, but they are telling me that 2028, this, this band of Christ slash Buddha energy becomes the dominant energy on the planet. That doesn't necessarily mean world peace. It just means that we're under one dominant energy right now. That is particularly harsh. I mean, everybody's feeling it. You know, there's, there's a reason why people are like sick and sad and depressed and upset and da 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 da, da because we're, we're not working with the best dominating energy right now. But this energy comes in in 2028 and really starts to smooth things out. The most sensitive people will feel it beginning at the very end of this year. So, I mean, that's like next month. But you're going to start to have inklings of it this band of energy. I, I really hope people, you know, sometimes I like quit reading on the, the political or the celebrity stuff and I'm like, oh wait, I have a message. And I see people getting off because they don't care, you know, but these things are important. These things are important. These are, these are the, you know, I don't care about reading on Tommy Tuberville. I don't care. To me, that's not important. That's entertainment. And if it, if it makes everybody happy, then it makes me happy. But this stuff, this is the important stuff, you know? And it, this, this to me is like my true work. This is the real deal, you know? I, I, I am very happy to entertain people and make predictions and read on dumb shit like Tommy Tuberville, you know? But this, this kind of information, this, this is legit. This is the real stuff. This is the important stuff. This is what needs to be out in the world, not whether or not Tommy Tuberville gets his head out of his ass. Spoiler alert, he will not. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, my friends. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry for not being live with you. I'm sorry for not being on camera. I just, I needed a break. I needed a break. So I will see all of you hopefully next Thursday, 4 p.m. on the Zoom, ad-free, uncensored. You can ask about whatever you want. You can talk about whatever you want. You can use whatever sort of, you know, naughty YouTube words. <laughs> that you would like i'm thinking particularly of words that start with t or n or w but um we're, that's where we're going to be so i hope that you do join us it's super cheap for five bucks well worth the price and um i think it's going to be really really good really deep and really informative all right my loves i do love you i do adore you I am your biggest cheerleader. Be well.